Hi, welcome to Drawing Wild Washington. I'm your host, Jed Dunkerley, Associate Artist with the Bird Museum at the University of Washington in Seattle. In this program, we're drawing life from the Ponderosa Pine Woodland. These are woodsy places filled with, you guessed it, Ponderosa Pines. Uh, this is on the east side of the Cascades in northeastern Washington around Spokane. And in this episode, we're going to be drawing a plant, the low Oregon grape, a fish, the cutthroat trout, and a herp, the western fence lizard. So right to it, the low Oregon grape, not to be confused with the high Oregon grape. All right. So the this is the uh, Berberis or Mahonia nervosa. They're still working it out. Science is always changing. People can't ever get along. Uh, the stems are curved lines shooting out in all directions from a central point. So when you draw it, try to start at the bottom and just kind of go out in a bunch of different directions. Okay. So low Oregon grapes. Again, the high Oregon grape, same basic thing, just a little bit taller. Uh, the leaves are ovals that come to points and they, they, they go in pairs. So if you want to start drawing the leaves like this, they always come in little pairs and they go out to the tip like that. And you can overlap them. So they do the, kind of the same thing as ferns, but the leaves are just bigger. So when you're drawing them, you can always draw them in pairs. And they're kind of ovals that come up to a point like that. So if you're drawing a scene from the ponderosa pine woodland, always a good idea to have some low Oregon grape in the background to make it look authentic. Now, leaves are only part of the situation because in the middle, these stalks will kind of grow up and that's where the flowers bloom in like these golden yellow blooms in April and May. And then they ripen into these blue fruits. So I'm going to draw a bunch of the blue fruits. So the stems are coming up out of the middle. And it's got these blue fruit clusters. And they kind of look like grapes. But they're not quite as sweet. They're quite bitter. And you can be eaten in like jams and things like that. I'm going to go ahead and start drawing some of the details. And again, these grow, a lot of times they grow in clusters. So if you want to draw some more back here, sometimes I'll draw them just the outline first and then draw in the stems. And then you can go in and draw all the leaves like that. Sometimes I'll just leave it to the imagination. Just draw some, you know, once you've drawn one really nice, then the rest of them, you can kind of leave it a little bit loose and people will go, oh, you, that, those must be like this. Okay, so these are some low Oregon grapes. Uh, again, the fruit, not sweet. I don't know why they call them grapes. They look like grapes, must be an Oregon thing. And the leaves have a little bit of a prickly edge to them. So I'm just gonna draw one stem and show you what they would all look like. And rather than go back and detail every single one of these leaves for you, I'll let you extrapolate from what I'm doing here. Okay, so I'll draw a couple stems actually, just because it's kind of fun. Once you get started, just draw the same thing over and over again. So again, the leaves kind of have points at the end. There's the stems, there's the berries. And the leaves are favorites of uh, deer and elk. They like to eat the leaves. These things love to grow in the shade, but it's got to be a dry shade, which is why it's in eastern Washington in the Ponderosa Pine Woodlands. Okay, so this is the basics. You get the idea. Uh, I'm going to move on. I'm going to move on to the cutthroat trout. Uncle Rinkus Clarkie, actually named after William Clark of Lewis and Clark. Lewis and Clark. Clark. Okay, uh, we're going to draw the body. These things are up to about 40 inches long and 15 pounds in size, depending on the habitat. 
And I'm going to draw four large circles. One, two, three, four. Four in a row. And then I'm going to draw one more, fifth one. That's going to be for the tail. Okay, now the body is going to just start at the front here. There's almost like a point. And then it goes all the way down. It gets wider and then it gets narrower all the way down back to the tail. And we're going to do the same thing on the bottom. Start with a little circle for the bottom jaw, and then it goes down about as tall as the circle, and then comes back down there for the tail. And then the tail kind of broadens out like this. It's almost like a triangle, about a little bit taller than the body even. And then at the back, it kind of goes in and then out again. So it's got a little notch in the back. That's the tail. And you can go ahead and put these this ray pattern on it right there. Okay, the head is about a quarter length of the body. So since we use these four circles, you could say the head is about that long. And you can start by drawing the gills, which are kind of a C shape right there. Now the mouth is kind of a downward slash. Okay, so that's the mouth right there. And it's got these kind of thick mouth parts, like lips all around it. So it kind of goes downwards like that. It goes almost to where the gills start. And then the eye is kind of right, if you made a triangle right here, the eye would be right in the middle of that triangle. So I'm going to do a couple circles for the eye. And there is my cutthroat trout's face. Okay, everything's kind of spaced out as it should be. Now, the fins. The pectoral fin can spread out, but a lot of times you'll see it pressed up against the back of the body. So I'm just going to draw it like this, kind of a little oval that is about as long as my second circle. All right, now about in the middle of the third circle is the dorsal fin. And it's kind of a, a big triangle. And then there's a little notch cut out at the bottom, so it looks kind of like that. So instead of going all the way down, you cut a little bitty notch right there. And that is the dorsal fin. Underneath that, about as tall, but half the width, right in the middle, is the pelvic fin. And same thing, it's got this little notch at the bottom, so it doesn't go all the way back. It's like, kind of like a triangle, and then you cut out another little tiny triangle. Okay, then halfway to the tail, again, is a fin called the anal fin. It's almost like this dorsal fin, except just upside down. So we're going to do it under this fourth circle, like that, a little bit bigger cuts off before it gets to the tail, and there's a teeny little nubbin called the adipose fin right over the top like that. And that is basically how you do that. The lateral line goes all the way down, and then it's got these speckles that fill up the, starts on the back, and once it gets to about the, the uh, fin here, both of these fins, then it's just kind of like forgets its rules and just goes everywhere. So there's just speckles everywhere, even on the tail, even on the the dorsal fin. Okay, so I'm gonna go in and, and try to draw in some of the details here, a little bit darker. I'll tell you a little bit about these cutthroat trout. Uh, they are closely related to salmon. So draw the mouth here. They kind of look like salmon. Some of you might have already figured that out or already knew that. And they do spawn up in rivers and lakes, they are a favorite uh, popular sport fish. If you've ever gone fishing, you might have caught some cutthroat trout. And they're pretty close um, evolutionarily to the, uh, the rainbow trout. Sometimes they can interbreed with them that make a kind of a hybrid called cut bows, cutthroat and rainbow makes cut bow. I don't see why it couldn't be a rain throat though. I think that sounds cooler. All right, so I'm gonna draw in with darker lines, leaving out my setup lines and my mistakes, of course. This is as good a time as any to remind you that making mistakes as you're setting up your fish or your any drawing, it's just part of the game. Even I do it. Sometimes I do it on purpose, just so I can see where I'm going. OK, 
Okay, I'm going to put in my speckles. Speckles kind of go all the way over here. Okay, and you can really go to town on these speckles. Take a look at the photographs. You just got speckles, speckle mania back here at the back of the cutthroat. Again, it started all orderly and then towards the back it just went crazy throughout the rule book. Okay, so that's your cutthroat trout. Moving on to the western fence lizard, Scheloporus occidentalis. All right, so these things, you start out, first of all, they're also known as the blue belly lizard. I'll give you a, a chance to try to figure out why. And they're loosely related to iguanas. So the body, I'm gonna start with a long oval. Okay. All in all, these lizards are about eight inches from tip to tail. The head is gonna be a circle of the same height pinched off at the front end. Okay, so that's gonna be like right here. And then it kind of pinches off in the front. It's a circle and then it goes out almost like a triangle and then kind of comes back like that. Okay, it joins up with the body. And then the tail is kind of a long triangle, about the same length as the body. And I'm gonna give it a little curve downward right there. Okay, so this is about the same as that. And the head's about half of that. There's where half looks like. All right, the eye is a semicircle in the middle of the head. The way we're looking at it, Kind of looks like it's mad, but it's not mad. It's just a lizard. Okay, and then the other eye, you're not going to see it because it's on the other side, but you'll see how it kind of bulges out like that. Now there is a pattern line that goes all the way down. And there's kind of these triangle sort of pattern that goes on top of it on its back and then on the side there's just scales, scalarama. Okay, so I'm going to do some like crisscross scales and again you could spend all day putting textures and patterns on these guys. But I'm going to move on to the legs and it's too bad you can't see the blue bellies but uh, if you want to draw the lizard belly up you will you can see it and there's photographs you can find. Okay, the legs at the front of the body, there are little ovals that are kind of right past where the head attaches to the body. And the front legs go backwards and then forwards. The back legs kind of do the opposite. So right before the tail, we'll draw a little circle for an attachment point. They go forwards and then backwards. So they, they go opposite directions. And you'll find most four-legged creatures do that. Then for the front, the hands, draw a little circle. And then five long fingers coming out like that. And they radiate all in all directions out from the center. The foot, instead of a circle, it's going to be a little bit of an oval. And it's going to be short and then a little bit longer and then a little bit longer and then really long and then one that comes back like that. And they have little claws at the end of them if you want to draw those. Okay, so that is about the the details of the fence lizard. The mouth comes down kind of right in the front there. You can kind of see this. It kind of feels iguana-y. I don't know. Um, they are cold-blooded, so they have to spend a lot of time heating themselves up, and they will lay out on rocks and even fence posts, which is how they got the name Western Fence Lizard, in case you were wondering. All right, let me draw the tail here. Uh, they eat insects, and they hibernate during the winter. Okay, I'm draw my little toes, my little claws. These hands are just amazing. So skinny, yet so strong. All right, coming on right here. And then again, yeah, really look at these back feet. They're funky. Imagine if your back feet looked like that, how uh, you would walk around. Okay, and then again, there's this kind of triangle pattern on there. And that, you could spend all day drawing textures. Check out your photographs for your Western fence lizard. Sometimes I just just do it real quick just to get the, the basic idea. Look, here's some scales. Here's some more scales. Here's some more scales. 
I learned a long time ago to kind of let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Okay, don't obsess about every little detail. You just suggest. Sometimes it's good enough to just suggest. There's the western fence lizard. That's going to be it for now. Uh, I'll put myself in the corner here to say goodbye. Um, thanks for watching the Burks Drawing Wild Washington. Until next time, don't forget, drawing starts with seeing and thinking. So when you want to draw something, try to see the shapes that are inside of it. Think about how they go together. And if you use that technique, there's really nothing you can't draw. So until next time, thanks for Drawing Wild Washington. What's that? You want more? Well, why didn't you say so? We've got coloring book pages available for each one of the ecosystems we've done a program on, and we've got the entire mural available as a silk screen poster for purchase on the website. So check out the links and get yourself some more ecosystem art. Bye.